Hello everybody and welcome to Masterworks. Tonight we're going to take a look at a living American artist. His name is Lynn Schmiel and uh, he's one of my favorite artists. He's uh, he's always got interesting compositions and interesting little ideas and kind of plays these fun little games with his compositions. So you guys are in for a real treat tonight. So um, let's just hop right in and get started. What do you say? Okay, so like always, hello, hi Susan, hi Susan, so let's take a minute and just um, have a look at this guy before we really start talking about him. Again, this is Lynn Schmiel. He's a living American artist. And we're going to look at this painting and one other by one other painting by him. So what do you think? Are you a fan? Are you a fan? Were you able to see the hidden little gem in there? Hopefully you're able to make it out. Sometimes people have a hard time with impressionism and his uh, points of view sometimes are a little different, but this is just a pond or water with lily pads in it. The reflections off the water, you can see through a little bit here. And then we have the big reflection here and reflections of the trees back there. Okay, are you able to digest that into uh, painting terms into values and structures and design and order well let's disorient us a little bit we're going to turn it on its side and into black and white hmm can you see the elements of the paint a little bit better Where do you end on this one? Where do you end? Right, obviously right here. What is this? This is the white. Oh, what did you see that before now? Do you see what that is? Darks. So we have darks on this side. Immediately against our white or our high value. And then it goes to kind of a light gray and a dark gray. And then on top of the dark gray, the lily pads are more of a light gray. All right, so let's go back and look at the original. Do you see those patterns now? I don't know. No arrow. I hope there's an arrow now. So anyway, here's the light we were looking at. There was a special. Why is this the finish? Well, this is light and it's a lot bigger light. But this one is surrounded bottom and top by a dark. Do you see that? So that brings that into focus a little bit. But because of the size of this, it's almost 
I don't want to say a tug of war, but an aesthetic balance between this and here. Right? He's just so, so clever, I think. So, so clever. And he has very interesting colors. So that's what it would look like in black and white normally. Does that make a little more sense now? So does, does the water kind of go darker, richer, to lighter, grayer, to the lightest? And then we're stopped from going any further by the dark. And then the light lily pads. Then we have the darks poking out of the gray. And then we come to the light. Notice what this does right here. It's kind of amazing, but this is the kind of solution you want to look for. What would happen if we took these reeds out? This thing would get a little bit stiff. It, it would just be a little too much. But those reeds are just enough to kind of, ah, and why is it an ah? Well, look at this, and we don't want to repeat that note. So he's lessened it here. And then he's really disguised it here. Oops. Going off the track with my mouse. Anyway. Anyway, again, that's Lynn Schmill. Living American artist. Put his name up there one more time so you can see it. A lot of fun. So let's look at another one of his. Again, another water painting. I get kind of an interesting composition, isn't it? Oops. So take just a minute and take it in. Do you see where we go? Do you see how he gets us there? Before we investigate the value structure, let's just look at some of this paint. There's a signature right there, El Schmiel. We've been talking a little bit about color notes in class. And um, the Impressionist are kind of loosely painted like this. There's more easier to see the color notes. <laughs> wow, I'm so happy to hear that. So Susan says, so much thought in it. I've taken art, art history classes that never did this kind of analysis. You know, it's something that I get very infrequently, and I think it's imperative for our education. And look how we come out of the gray, we come through the dark, and we get into the color. Let's see, where's, there's the arrow, there's the arrow. So this is blue, but it, basically it's gray, reading is blue, and we've got the dark kind of greens, and the warm color, warm rich color and then the lighter warm color but you see how that color is all spotty but this is solid what care flat solid carries and that's why we have so much weight and we finish back there and then look it's all lined up on one part of the canvas and then you don't even notice but just less back here to support all of that coming forward. So let's come out of this.
By the way, those bright rocks that we see, what's behind them? What's in front of them? Why do they seem so light? Right, I mean, again, this right here is some of that very gross, disgusting paint we were talking about. I, I've ac I actually have people all the time will get this like gray mixed up. I call it baby poop. It's just, it looks disgusting. And they, I refuse to put that on my canvas. Well, we don't want every color on there being attractive and drawing you. But because this is quote unquote unattractive, it makes that shine even more bright. As people start, they think, well, what if I put a really bright right? Well, the only thing a really bright right here is going to do is lessen the brightness of this. Notice the reflections in the water and how much less they are. Right? When I say less, they're darker, richer, aren't they? They, they don't carry as much weight. So let's reorient ourselves and look at this one in black and white. Mm. You see how clean that value pattern? It looks kind of crazy when you look at it up close, but even the crazy is orchestrated. What do you mean? Well, look at that craziness on the one side and then we come to the rocks and you see how kind of clean and orderly and stacked not literally stacked right on top of one another, but stacked in comparison to that water swirling and swishing and reflecting around. And then the rocks behind them are less and a little more broken up. So it gives them less impact. And those rocks we do see, look at the variety. The big on the one side, and then it almost completely die, dies off, and then just a little water tipping through builds back up, and then we build back up a little bit, and then it runs up the... Mm, that's the, the coming and the going, right? It, it's not a single note, but it's like a, a movement of a note, a note movement. All right, well, let's right side up. So that would be upside down. Can you see how clean this is right across here? And again, how big is this in relation to the whole space? Right? Another thing that's so interesting is there's basically a bunch of nothing, which we know very well is not a bunch of nothing. Why? Because that light gray against the dark, big contrast brings forward. As we come into the light, the color, Right, the deep rich color here and the lighter color brings us right up to here and we're gonna get marched along. We don't go out the, why don't we go out the top because we're stopped with the shadow. Right over like that and just lets us kinda, oh, all the way back. Okay, so one more time. This is a living American artist, Lynn Schmiel, that we're having a look at. Notice that even in black and white, these are beautiful. Right? Color can never carry a painting. It can add, it can decorate. The painting's carried by value. The design is value. Value divides the canvas, makes it visible. So, so important. So important. I tell people all the time, if you don't have a lot of money and can't afford to buy all this expensive paint, just buy black and white paint, right? And use it generously. Better to do that than have to worry about putting these little bitty dabs out of the expensive colors.
because right you can learn how paint works in black and white but you know I don't blame you I ain't mad at you I ain't mad at you I mean come on come on who's not gonna want to do a little bit of that who's not gonna want a little bit of color a little spice in that black and white yeah a little warmth a little coolness a little richness mmm 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 mm. just kinda seasons that mill doesn't it seasons it up really nice again it's not gonna make the mill but its appropriate role colors appropriate role is as a spice and uh, this gentleman right here does it very very well okay I think with that we're going to keep these short and sweet. Should we go back? Give that one another gander before we go. Right? Again, so much order, but it looks so haphazard and natural. Right? Part of the art is disguising that order. <laughs> right? And just present, oh yeah, this is how I found it. Uh, not so much. Not so much. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because he's a creator, not a copier. And you know what? So are you. So are you. Okay, so I'm going to be back tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for the month of December, three times a day, five days a week live on YouTube Meyer studio student feedback in the mornings we come in the studio and I work on my stuff in the afternoons at 1 30 and then evening we look at some master works so free art education I hope you appreciate it I hope you like it if so give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe you can hit that little red button down there um, tell your family and friends uh, we're on the march to a thousand but more important than that we're just trying to find a community of friends who like to paint and uh, are supportive and want to encourage everybody on their on their march. So if that sounds like something you'd like to do, uh, come around, say hello. We'd love to meet you. All right, everybody. Have a have a beautiful night. Thanks so much. Good night, Susan.